Welcome back. Today we're going to modify my custom power supply because I mentioned I would do so before I gave it away and that time has come. I've uh, picked the winner and at the end of this particular video I will announce the winner. We'll get in contact with each other. I'll get your address and this will be yours. So first thing we're going to do is take this apart. Uh, I already took the screws out obviously. Uh, all these labels, all this is going to get disconnected because I have to make another hole in this and then from this sitting around it's kind of gotten all fingerprinted up and everything. So it's going to get a fresh coat of paint and I actually have to also move this USB port so I can replace the voltage selector switch and I'll put this in a more convenient location. Maybe the front, maybe the top, not really sure where yet. Um, you can see opening this up this little lead down here that's where we're going to connect the switch back to also since i've done a few of these already i have a little bit of a different method to doing these so uh i may or may not implement that in this particular one it depends on the circuit board in here but one of the things i do want to do in here is actually put a circuit board in um, you can see there's just this little set of leads over here uh, this goes up to the LEDs and some other things, the switches. Uh, I actually want to completely integrate that a little bit be better onto a, a circuit board, which will uh, give the end user some options later on if they actually want to further modify this. There's already a place to, to do so. And uh, just some other things, like I have some extra leads in here that aren't necessarily needed, so I want to uh, address those as well. That's all apart now, and you can see this is all just terminated to uh, ring terminals here, which are really useful. And uh, obviously they just went onto the backs of these little jacks here. But this whole spaghetti mess of wires here is, is you know, as neat as you're gonna get it. You can see I have uh, one ground wire going specifically to the switch. I actually specifically did that in this uh, particular revision. Some of the newer ones have actually been building a like ground bus and all the points go there and you don't need individual ones for each uh, implement here. Like the lights, like each LED has its own ground and everything. But you can see I do have just this one spot over here where it just it's kind of ugly. So I'm going to go ahead and eliminate that I'll get a close-up on it so you can you can see what it is it's all heat shrinked and it's soldered neat and everything like that it's just I'd rather terminate this a different way now so I'll probably go like I said directly to uh, a, a circuit board all these will go to one location on there and I'll probably just use one of those perf boards I should have one around here yeah something like this this is uh, you could break it off this was a much larger sheet this is actually all I have left. I have more perf board coming soon, but this particular one was from Shore Electronics and it's been um, a great uh, pattern, I guess you could say. You can see wherever there's these little squares, that's where they're all connected. Uh, so obviously these pads over here don't connect to anything. The ones in this L over here and this one, they're all connected to each other. So you can make little mini bus bars. So I'll make like one side maybe negative, maybe a bunch of um, the standby voltage so I can connect the LED and the USB like directly to one of these here. So I'll, I'll show you all that when I get in there. Um, on the other side here, we could see this is the red lot wire that goes to the switch. And since I wanted it permanently switched on, I guess you could say, I just soldered and heat shrink the connection here but we'll break this connection and solder it back to the switch so that way you can select between the higher and lower voltages that this thing has uh, as an input voltage. Because right now it's only set to 115 volt. Uh, so this will have to come out. And again, I'll have to remove all these little labels and stuff, but that's that. those are easy to make. That's just a label printer. Okay, I put a rubber band around all the primary voltage wires, which are these guys up here. Uh, interestingly, what I did on this one was the 3.3 volt select uh, wire. I actually bundled right up with a singular 3.3 volt output wire. And that's this brown orange combination. Um, I did this because, well, first of all, there was already enough wires on this. Um, that's two rings bunched together to get you five wires in. And while I could have just stuck 
this one last uh, orange one in there to make it six, the seventh wire, uh, the sense wire, wouldn't have sat in there very well. So I made it so you could just double these up. And if you actually look, the end over here is offset. So when they sit together, they sit a little bit more flush with each other when the, once they go into that uh, nut configuration with the actual uh, banana jack, as you can see. So that worked pretty well, but I might actually bring this right out to that little circuit board too, just so it's, it's out there. So I left that separated from the rest of them. Um, and then these wires over here, these are the ones I was mentioning that I initially had brought out, um, maybe perhaps uh, as a fan speed controller, so you can use 12 volt for high speed and the five, point, uh, the five volt for, for low speed. Uh, and then there's a, a, a ground for each. So I, I did that for a reason, but I don't really remember what. The other thing I could have used this for was if I actually wanted to put an internal power resistor, but I found that it didn't need it. So I just left these alone to be you know hacked for something else. Um, but if you look down here, you can see the switch, the lights, and the USB connection, how they all kind of come to a, a head here. So we're just going to clip this off and I'll separate these all out and figure out how I'm going to attach it to this board here. Oh, got her completely disrobed now. I actually decided I'm going to have to paint this anyway, so I might as well completely disconnect this. Also, there's a couple spots. It comes out of the board, uh, the power cables here, and then there's a, uh, a soldered connection with some heat shrink over it for some reason. And then I go up to the switch. Uh, and I did that, actually all three sets of wires have that. I must have decided just to cut them and then do something with it. So I'm gonna replace those wires. I don't really like having all those breaks in it. It's a little sloppy. So that'll all be redone as well. I'm just waiting for the soldering iron to heat up which it actually already is. And I'll just desolder this from the board now. I'm also going to undo the fan while I'm here, uh, as well as this gray power good connection, because if you look at it, it's kind of getting all twisted up there and it's, it's a little weak. So I wanna redo that wire as well. This particular power supply also has a five volt sense connection, which is what this one here is. So that's important to keep together as well. Um, the uh, actual 3.3 volt connection is actually best left connected to the actual terminal because it's sensing the voltage at that point. It's the same thing with the five volt sense too. So I'm gonna leave those as is. I'm not gonna actually bother um, connecting them to this little circuit board. Took a quick poke into the parts bin and did indeed find one of these voltage selector switches. You can see uh, you can select either between 115 or 230 volt, so we'll put that back in. And uh, luckily we could see where there was some old solder on the back here, so we'll know where to connect that. Uh, if, if in doubt, we could always check it with the multimeter. Also, you can see here I'm connecting one of these ring terminals to the blue wire, so I can actually go ahead and attach one of the blue little five-way posts to it. Now you can get these in red, blue, black, green, orange, yellow, white. Um, I think that's it, there may, even, there may be brown. But you know that you could use these particularly in this build because all these terminals have uh, different voltages and they all usually have different uh, colors internally. I usually leave all the uh, positive voltage is red and I you know I'll use this blue one here for the uh, negative voltage also I have a green one I'm going to use as a ground terminal I right, put the project down for the night and today's another day so I have a length of green wire here obviously I'll need this much but I already got the green ground connector set this is just for the earth ground something I started putting in some of the newer builds I figured since this is the deluxe unit might as well do that in there um, I managed to get the LEDs soldered onto the little board here. Now what's gonna have to happen is I'm gonna actually need to connect little jumpers over to the appropriate pads here. So all these uh, multiple pads
pads over here that I mentioned before. This is actually acting as a bus. So there's a 12 volt bus, a five volt bus, a standby voltage bus, and then a ground bus basically. So I'm gonna get those all connected over to these LEDs. I'm also gonna put the USB, get that all ready on here, and it's just gonna be and it's just going to be a bunch of short jumper leads running from here to the appropriate pads. Now what I did on this circuit board was I brought all the connections out across these pads here. So each one has its own adjacent pad. If you look on the other side, you could see hopefully a little square. So this pad and this pad are connected to each other. So um, that allows me to make jumpers and connect them to various places. So for example, this red wire, this one, these bunch here, all connect up to the USB and then eventually go over to um, this purple one, which is the standby voltage. So I also have a couple more connections if I had wanted to tack other things on there. I will leave it as is for now, um, but that way you get the option later on if you want to do something. Uh, only thing I have left to do on this board now is to get the various ground planes connected. I could have just went directly in to that uh, rail right here, but I decided against it. I, I figured it'd be better to make uh, jumpers over to a, a set of pads and just connect one over there. And, you know, it's six of one, half a dozen the other. That's just the particular way I felt like doing this one. You can see there's a couple jumpers on here already. Uh, also, you should note the USB green and white connectors this is data plus status minus they actually come to the board too and they actually short against each other the reason why i did that is certain devices look at that connection to see if it's shorted or if there's resistance or or whatnot and that determines how much power it could pull in and i know a lot of devices when you have it shorted like that try to pull the maximum voltage or the maximum current i should say from the actual charger so we're, we're going to do that to take advantage of what this has to offer. Uh, originally, I wasn't connecting those at all, and I just had the red and black uh, um, five volt leads coming down, but I decided uh, a lot of the newer builds, that's the way I'm doing it. But you can see how it all kind of terminates. And also, this white wire, this is the one that was the uh, uh, data uh, power good, I guess you could say, from the power supply. It's actually normally this gray wire, but since I used that for the LED that's here, and I didn't have much length left to go back and forth from the board to the LED, I decided just to use a different color. Unfortunately, I didn't have gray, so I just went with that instead. So that gets you the power switch and then all the other things like the LEDs and the USB port all connected to a nice little board, which makes that a lot easier to manage. And uh, had I had not built these already, I would have included the resistor on this board as well. They actually, that would have jumped across these uh, different pads over here and I would have used as a link. Uh, speaking of the grounds, I have somewhere on my bench here, a trace that I actually made. Let me go see if I can locate that. And here that is, you can just see it's more or less just a paper clip, uh, just bent into shape. And how this is going to work is I'm going to take this board, as so, and uh, let's see if I can just quickly put this together. This pin, this pin, and this pin are all negatives. So if I put that in place like this, it'll actually connect to the bus down here, and then it'll also connect all those, so I'll solder this in place. And there's enough clearance here that it's not going to be an issue. Plus, I'm going to paint this over with liquid electrical tape once it's done, or at least the contacts that may contact with something. And if you need to modify it, you can just rub it off. And here's that all soldered in. Pretty easy. Everything looks like it makes pretty good connection. I did check it out with the multimeter. And speaking of multimeter, I'll pull this into view. I also focused my attention on this switch. Now, this is the one, again, that's going to switch between either 115 or 230 volt. And I used the multimeter on these two leads here, put it in the continuity mode. On 230 volt, it does not beep. On 115 volt mode, it does. And that's what we want. We want continuity in the 115 volt setting. And that tests out fine. So I'm going to go ahead right now and put some liquid electrical tape 
on the backs of this and also on the back of that circuit board. One of the things I did on the circuit board before I decided to actually cover the bottom with the electrical tape was to put a blue LED on it and actually through a resistor connect that up to the 5 volt rail and that's just going to be a light that's kind of more or less just going to illuminate the inside of this case. One of those last minute things. It might not even be in that great of a position, but since it is on the board, we can try to put that anywhere where, where there's really room. There is enough leeway in this board. It's, it's pretty good. Um, but I do want to go ahead now and actually reattach the line in neutral, which I did, just temporarily to test this out. So um, since I do have the circuit board bare, we have to be very careful once I plug this in that I don't short anything out, including myself. The important thing to note are these very large capacitors. You can see in the bottom over here, this is an area we don't want to go into. Um, actually, the whole bottom of the board is a no-no. We're not going to touch that at all. Uh, and of course, the power will dissipate naturally on their own once this is um, disconnected from the mains. But we don't, we don't want to, you know, give any chance to shock. So we'll just let this dissipate and give it, you know, a good 10 minutes tops before I go poking around here. But you can see uh, I did put the electric, electrical tape in the bottom of this uh, voltage selector switch, and that came out pretty good. But I wanted to test out this little circuit board before I actually did that, and that required me to power this thing up. Also, I've removed the rubber band that kept all these power cables together. We're going to go ahead and uh, just separate these out. We'll put all the ground cables together, and I'll keep all these uh, separated probably with... Uh, either the helping hands or something just so they don't short out against each other. All right, the moment of truth is upon us. First thing I'm gonna do is gently and carefully plug this in. Now I did put heat shrink on the back of this, but I'm not gonna trust that to uh, not shorting out against the case. So we'll plug that in. So far, so good. Oh, I, I, I see a problem. I'm gonna stop right here. The ground wire for this power switch has come loose. Okay, rather than trying to solder the switch's ground wire to the board, I did it to the little circuit board that I have over here. It was just a lot easier to get into this connection than to try to mess with this big mass of wires down there. So I got the AC power plugged in. The switch is off. We're going to turn that on. Hopefully nothing fries right now. But I have the camera recording just in case. All right. We can see that the orange light is lit, and that means that AC power is coming in. The USB is also lighting up at um, 5.18 volts, which is perfect. So we know everything's fine there. Our blue LED is not lit, but that's okay because I have it set to come on when the main power supply is on. And if I flip the switch, we can see the green indicator light lights. And we also have the blue LED lighting as well. So that's going to provide some nice illumination in the case. So that does indicate everything is working. Obviously, it's not making any noise right now because the fan is still disconnected, but that's okay. Um, we can also go ahead and check. Now, I, I have the multimeter hooked up to the negative over here, the ground wire, I should say. And we can set this over here and see we're getting 9 volts on the 12-volt lead. And that's really interesting because obviously it should be 12 volts. Let's see what we get up here on 3.3. Uh, that's not exactly reading right either. And 5 volt. Now that one's pretty spot on. Let's try the one with the uh, sense connector on it. Yeah, it's still 3 volt. Now I do seem to remember um, when I flipped this over, it looked like I had a bad solder connection on one of the existing connections on this actual power supply which is unfortunate I thought I had connected it but I might not have good enough of a connection so I'm gonna actually check that out right now I'm a bit perplexed now because I actually found there was two capacitors on this main board here that had bad solder joints where they you can just wiggle the cap and it was completely loose which uh, of course means there's not a good connection and they all happen to be relative to the outputs over here. So I was trying to figure out maybe that's why we're not getting the correct output voltages as you can see. This is supposed to be 3.3 and uh, I figured well let me repair the two botched solder joints that I found and uh, test it out and we're still not at the proper voltages. 
the other thing is I actually have a power resistor here off in the corner which is getting kind of warm now but I have that hooked up to both the 5 volt and the 12 volt lines just to double make sure that we don't really need that in this project and that's that's not bringing the voltage up at all so I have to delve in a little deeper here I think I may have figured it out I have a feeling this switch is wrong you remember when I said it needed to make continuity in other words without the switch the wires were just connected together and we tested it out with the multimeter yeah if you solder the wires to the wrong terminals you no longer have continuity on 115 you have continuity at 230 so this whole time has it been switched incorrectly and unbeknownst to me it was wrong we shall find out I switched this to 230 volt I plugged in my 115 volt it's in standby this is still correct but now we have the terminal hooked up to 3.3 and if you remember it was quite below that if I flip the switch hopefully this number here will be above at least where it was before if not dead on 3.3 then at least above it oh yeah all right well that's a good sign what about if I move this over to the 12 volt terminal here? Do we get 12 volts indeed on it? Oh, we de indeed we do. Um, and of course we can check five volts as well. Yep, right where we want to be. Okay, excellent. So, womp womp. All it was was that switch. So I'm going to disconnect this, let the uh, AC voltage die out of these caps here again touching the other side of these could be quite painful if not deadly so we'll be very careful with those and uh, now that we know that this is operating in the proper voltages once I correct that switch there we're going to focus our attention on to this guy right here which is all the uh, AC lines we're going to dis disconnect the old ones there and measure out some new ones and get that all set and also what I'll do is get this hole here prepared for the USB to be relocated I won't be able to paint this right away though because it is kind of cold out and painting is going to be a little bit of a hard thing to do I'm gonna have to borrow someone's garage or something um, to do that before I actually send this thing out but nevertheless the uh, mechanical part of it I guess you could say will work now I can take a look at these wires here now if you notice this comes from the outside as does the switch but because the wires are directly connected to each other as such you have to um, basically just solder this all in the place from here uh, and that's partially why the wires were cut because I actually had to cut them to pull these pieces out to uh, actually paint this so what I should have done was actually taken this all apart and like desoldered everything and then removed it that way so the intention now is I'm going to cut this and then I'm going to undo everything on here also I'll be noting which side is the neutral which side's hot which side's ground uh, and the th uh, last thing I have to do with this whole lot is get another wire like this here with this loop on it to go up to the grounding post now I'm not sure if I want to go from the terminal here down to the case as it was originally and then go from here up to the post or if I want to go directly from here and split off both ways that I'm not sure about I have to see if there's enough room on the little ring here there should be uh, a little loop that this wire solders into so I'll go desolder this and clean this all up right now and if we take a look you can see we can actually put the ground and the neutral wire on the actual terminal now we can also set up the wires on the switch because after all it comes uh, I should say the hot comes out of the terminal down to the switch from the switch to the to the board and since these two sit next to each other we can see how long we'll need the wires to go because these two go in the same spot on the board basically next to each other and we we're not going to connect the two to each other because we'll have to slip this one in from the outside of the case and then run the wire through the hole 
back where this is going to pop, solder it in, and then we can slide it back in and then screw them both into place. This one actually pops in and that'll be connected. So we'll save that for last, but at, like I said, the very least we can connect all the wires to it now. So once again, I'll go just completely disconnect everything from this. Got neatened up a little bit here because I got to a little bit of a milestone. You can see I got all the AC lines pretty much ready to go. Again, this is going to connect to the case. This is going to go directly to the board. And this empty terminal here is going to have this switch connect to it. The shorter wire is going to go right to that. And then the longer one is going to go uh, again to the board. So they'll sit next to each other like this, as, as mentioned, or, or better yet, turned around this way. As mentioned, that will connect like that. And then these will go off to the board. That will go to the case. And I, I did this so this assembly can push in from the outside and get attached. And this also can get pushed in from the outside. And since they connect to each other from the inside, it'll be easy. So that's all set to go. Now, I have everything bundled up over here. And we can see what I'm going to do now is get some zip ties after I make a trip to the frozen tundra. That's my yard. And I'll get some zip ties out of my van and just neaten up these wires uh, a little bit. While I'm out there, also grab the drill because we're going to drill this case. Now I need to put two holes up at the top here, one for the negative 12 volt connection. And it's probably gonna go over here someplace. And then on the other end, because there's a lot of room up here, I'm gonna put the uh, ground connection just to keep it segregated. There really isn't much more room down here. Also, what I'll do is, is I'll grab my alcohol and rub this whole thing down and kind of get it ready for painting. You can see where there was some stickers here. I'll also have to remove these little rubber feet. I do have more of those somewhere. I'm pretty sure I know where they are, but there was feet on the side so you can stand it this way, and there was also feet in the bottom, so I'll have to do that. I'm not sure what happened here, but that'll get all cleaned up. And there was a label here to just cover this hole. This is the hole where the wires would normally come out to go into your other computer. But since they're all internal now, that hole's not needed. So I actually, I have one of these. This is a PCI bracket from inside of a computer where you'd have a USB connection. And this was just cut from one of those brackets. I'm actually gonna take this and mount this from the inside here and put the USB port back there. And that'll also cover up that ugly hole here with something a little more solid. That's where I usually put them, um, but this particular build I decided I was going to put it above the power socket here like you saw originally, um, but it doesn't really it doesn't really work good there. It's better to have it someplace else. I just marked everything out with a pencil. It's not perfect straight lines. It doesn't need to be. I just try to triangulate about where I'd like it to sit. This uh, last hole up here was never really drilled in right to begin with. So it's not going to really line up perfectly, but it, it will do just the right job the way it wanted to. And we're going to put the ground over here. There's just enough wire. If you look to see where our jack's going to go here in the front, about, oh, about right about here. There's definitely enough wire to get it into that position. And it's kind of nice and centralized. It just keeps it looking neat. So now I'm going to go ahead and drill these holes out. Unfortunately, I don't have a center punch in here, so I'm going to have to make do without one. Now we're going to start off with the small bit and then we're going to go up in size to the larger bit and that's going to make this a lot easier to cut. Also it's going to allow me to cut at a slower speed which you know when I'm doing this with hand it's going to be a lot more controlled. Uh, if it was a little warmer I'd be out in the shed and I would have a piece of wood underneath this to brace this a little bit so I won't have to worry about this metal bending as I get in here with the drill press. But this is going to be the best way to do this in the house. Well golly all right, well, I got that all drilled and I actually filed the hole so there's no burrs or any sharp spots you can see inside here. Some of the grinding I did. And I did that with just the mini files because that's really all I had. But both of the holes in there, you can see, are, are well done. They're, they're definitely nice and smooth. And this is why I needed to do a paint job. Uh, I also sanded it down real quick. Now, it was already a flat black but I sanded it just so the new coat of paint would adhere to it a little better. Um, and that was after cleaning it with alcohol. And I cleaned it again with alcohol after sanding it just to get any of the, the fine particulate off of it. 
Uh, it does actually add a cool effect, like if you looked at the worn edge. So I might include that in the final product, but I'm not sure yet how I want to do that. Uh, here's the base piece. You can see I got that sticker off the, I got the glue, uh, glue adhesive off really easily. Drilled out the holes for the little metal plate for the USB to attach to. And that came out perfectly. I just put that on there on this side mount and uh, marked the holes out with this pencil here. And that was pretty easy. Uh, now what I want to do now is I'm going to actually assemble this and give it one final testing before I consider it mechanically finished. And I'll announce who the winner is. And hopefully you'll get in contact with me. And I'll figure out when I can get this to you because I do want to paint it first before I do actually send it out. But I, I wanted to have this video ready for this week. And I wanted to have the uh, winner announced also this week. So paint or no paint, I, I will do that. Here we have all the terminals actually mounted in there. You can see they came out pretty good. Of course, I switched. I, I don't remember which way they were before. I think I might have had the black on the outside edge, but I found it was easier to do it this way. So this way you have positive 12 volt, negative 12 volt with the grounding point in between the two. And here we have the board mounted inside. You can see the fan. Uh, power input uh, switch and the voltage selector are all also installed. The only thing I did not do at this time is put a piece of heat shrink on the hot connection here because that's going to be desoldered to remove this all again later once I actually go to paint this. I just wanted to make sure everything was in perfect working order so like I said I can call it a finished product. Uh, one of the things I do want to do too is, is I want to put some hot melt glue uh, in with these capacitors just between them and also a little dollop on the board just to hold them in place to keep them from wiggling out like they did last time and having the solder joint fail. Not sure why that happened. That was pretty pretty weird. This thing hasn't really seen any service. It's brand new. It's just been sitting on a shelf. Um, that's one of those things, you know, they should have really been celastic in. I don't have any celastic kind of goop to put in there, so we'll just use the hot glue instead. Got everything inside connected, as you can see, including the ground wire going up on top. And uh, I'll have to find a home for this particular board to sit. So as I put this together, we'll figure out where it's going to go. Maybe perhaps in this back wall right here. Uh, also, the USB is connected. Everything looks pretty good. I'm going to get the top put on now. All right, got this all put together. Time to give this a test and announce the winner. So first we're going to do is plug it in and hope there's no magic smoke. All right, and switch it on and we'll see we have the orange light lit, which means this USB port should be active. Uh, let's see, this should plug in this way. You can see we have 5.18 volts, which is good. And then if we flip the switch, the green light will light. The fan spins, which you can hear. And then we'll test the voltages out. You can see I have my multimeter in the corner of the screen already. And let me just uh, tweak these down. That will give me clearance on this thing. All right. Now these are all in interconnected as far as that's concerned. So it doesn't matter where I connect this to. And uh, we'll just squeeze that in there like that. And we should see this one, I believe, is 3.3 volt. It's a little high, but that's pretty good. This one should be 5 volt, which is 5.2. Still a little high, but it's better than it was before. And this one should be 12. And again, that one's high, and that one's that one's good to have high because 12 volts is usually. Uh, anyway, and then this one over here should be the negative 12 volt, which we can see did come up negative. And then this is the ground. Now ground, you know, there's not going to be any connection between those two voltage-wise. But if I put this into uh, continuity, which you can see these all have continuity. This should also as well. Now this is reference to earth, uh, so you could use that as an auxiliary port for connecting maybe one of these like wrist straps like I have over here, uh, or an anti-static mat. You can just plug it in like that and this will of course now ground out to that. So using it as a bench power supply becomes useful for that regard. So all I have left to do is paint this, which of course will be on a warmer day. 
and put some labels on it and just mark this all out. But for all intent and purpose, this is done. So now we can go ahead and announce the winner. Now there were nine comments left on the actual video for this particular power supply. Five of those comments were eligible for the contest. And since all five of them were really good comments, I decided to once again use a randomizer and put all five names into a random website. It went through them all and in a matter of seconds it gave me a random name and that name was Endless Mountain Woodworks. So congratulations, you're the winner. Uh, unfortunately, I can't contact you via your YouTube channel. I can only contact you via an, a comment or call you out in a video and hopefully you see it. And I think you're one of my subscribers. Again, I don't see every subscriber's name. That's just a little thing. Uh, you, have to, um, you have to actually share your subscription list publicly for me to be able to see that. So some, some people I can see you're subscribed to me, others I cannot. Uh, and uh, I, I did try to reach out to uh, the winner of this and the winner of the Scandatech tool set in the same way and I, I could not do so. So to contact me, I would suggest going to the about page on my YouTube channel and actually going to the message portion there and send me a message. That way it comes through on your login, I can see it's you and um, we'll exchange emails, I'll get your address, and once I get this thing painted, probably in the next few days, I uh, will get this sent out to you. And with that, I wanna thank everyone for watching and participating in the actual giveaway. Now, this was the commemorative 500 subscriber giveaway, as I mentioned. The next one will be at the 1500 mark, uh, and I'm already at seven something, a little over seven, maybe 716 by now, so, um, I do anticipate on getting there and of course like I said earlier in the video the goal for this year is to get to 2000 that would be really sweet and uh, there's gonna be a lot of interesting stuff coming up so I'm gonna try to uh, make these videos um, I'm gonna try to film them more frequently unfortunately I only get a couple nights a week to do so but I'm gonna try to uh, spend more time on them to be a little more consistent with that guys I want to thank you for watching I'm gonna put a couple links over here in the corner for some other videos as well as my little icon in the corner to subscribe to this channel. Thanks again. We'll see you next video.